So of course that's the Auckland Sky Tower. Uh, perhaps some of you will be going there tonight to watch that. I'm not quite sure. I just came across that, um, those videos and I thought nothing compares <laughs> Thank you guys Oh good I just wanted to uh, show you guys that just to get you in the New Year's mood, um, help relax you. I thought that was quite amazing. Uh, I know you got, um, Maggie tells me you guys know how to really celebrate New Year's. Um, uh, that's awesome. So we think about the year, we think about 2017, uh, we think about some of the events that have taken place uh, throughout the year. So. Uh, around the world, uh, you know, I think perhaps uh, we think about things like uh, maybe Donald Trump coming into power, uh, the presidency, you think about the threat of North Korea, nuclear arms, we think about um, the upsurge and the natural disasters around the world. We've really seen a lot of natural disasters around the world, and of course the the latest uh, one being in Mindanao with all the flooding. Uh, it's very sad and uh, the loss of life there. Uh, more locally, of course, we've seen a, a, a new government come into New Zealand, a Labour, New Zealand First, Green Party, formed a new government here in New Zealand. Uh, and also, I think about... Um, Team New Zealand uh, regaining the America's Cup in yachting, which is a big thing here in New Zealand. So I just ask you guys, um, what is 2017? When you think about 2017, what, what, uh, what kind of year has it been for you guys? Has it, you know, has it been a challenging year and that perhaps a year you'd rather forget? Uh, a few things have happened in your life or, uh, perhaps you've been very blessed this year. Uh, <clears throat> myself, uh, I've been very blessed. Uh, ministry, uh, ministry's been awesome, not without its challenges. Uh, work and family, celebrating my wife's 50th birthday, uh, traveling around New Zealand, traveling abroad. Uh, so it's been pretty awesome year for us, but not without its downfalls. Uh, some of you know that I, uh, I'm i a pet lover. Any pet lovers out there? <laughs> I know it's funny, but I, I lost my doggy last, about a week ago, and I, I'm still grieving, I'm still mourning. Have you ever seen a grown man cry over a little dog? It, uh, it's... it's uh, not a very good, good, good sight, but uh, here in New Zealand we love our pets and they're part of the family. And when they go, we, you know, we, we notice. So, uh, but the thing that sticks in my mind this year, it's been a, a year of uh, study. For me, that's the one thing that dominates my mind this year. Uh, myself, Brother Jet, and uh, Brother Greg, yeah, he's here. Uh, we um, are doing a national certificate in Christian study, so we are 
completed two papers this year. Um, yeah, so that pretty much dominated a lot of my time. A lot of the younger people who are studying at uni um, don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's been quite a few years before I've done any kind of formal study. So, yeah, that's, that's the one thing that really uh, sticks in my mind when I think about uh, 2017. So I just, uh, I just want to uh, like to involve you guys in my message today, being the last day of the year, uh, being a Thanksgiving. Um, it's awesome to, to speak on the last Sunday, on the last day of the year. I guess I get to have the last say. So I just want to know who, who's been blessed this year. I, I would expect every hand to go up. Is it, everybody in the Lord is blessed. It's, it's not based on your circumstances or whatever happens in your life. It's based on who you have as Jesus Christ. So I would expect every hand to go up as we're all blessed. So um, who's received breakthrough this year? Who's received breakthrough? Any breakthroughs this year? Join me at the back. Brother Grant, answered prayer. Who's received answered prayer this, this year? Uh, there's quite a few hands. Praise God for your answered prayer. Healing. Who's received healing this year? Uh, praise God for your healing. So, who would like to thank God today? Okay, that's quite a few hands. Because my next question is... <laughs> Who would like to come and testify? Who would like to come? I'd, I'd like to take maybe two or three testimonies, perhaps a minute on each. I, could, I saw quite a few hands there. So if I can, who would, if I can get another mic of, I don't see any mics, but. Oh, there you We need a mic. Now I want at least three testimonies. If we have more, then. Uh, as time allows. Sound, sound, sound check. So, um, thank you, sister. You have a towel with you? A towel. You might cry now. <laughs> uh, I'd just like to thank God for the past. Um, I think it's really regarding my mom. When she was sick way back in May, and then uh, first, yeah, went to the Philippines, first time for this for this year, and it's a really a uh, privilege to see her alive that time, and to be with her for a short time, because I just stay for like um, almost six weeks in the Philippines, and to look after her and. Um, spend time with her and I saw how God has really showered us with the blessings of friends and prayer and I really felt that you guys also in the church praying for my mom for, for the provision for my family and yeah it's really I can really feel that prayer and yeah just November 27 when my mom passed away and I believe in my heart that she's now in the Lord and resting in the presence of our God. And I said, oh, you're lucky, mom, because you're there already. <laughs> you're still here and still battling with our own, you know, battle. But you are there. And I believe that she, she's now rest in peace with the presence of the Lord and um, continue praising the Lord for all the things that he has done in our family and for your continued prayer, I really, really thank God for, for that. And sometimes you feel like to cry, but you have nothing to cry now. It's like you really accept the fact that she's gone. And you have that peace that she's in the Lord. And I thank God for that peace that 
because that's my prayer that God give me peace because I don't know how long should I still you know morning like Joe when he lost his dog <laughs> so how much more mine is I lost my mom and I know it's not the same it's just a dog <laughs> if you have the love for your dog how much more you love for your mom right so I really thank God that still I'm still remembering her so remembering our time together and really really thankful for the Lord for for the chance to spend time with my mom and for all of you thank you awesome thanks anybody else ah oh, I mean Good afternoon. Um, yeah, I, I, I'd uh, like to thank uh, God because um, a few months ago um, I went to a men's, uh, uh, the men's night um, where Pastor White um, was uh, speaking and um, It was just incredible, you know, um, for 35 years um, um, I had let a certain situation rule my life, you know, um, you know like for 35 years um, just to be out, each night, you know, um, when I went to bed the situation played on my mind, you know, um, you know, every night, you know, and you can imagine, you know, after 35 years, you know, um, you know, as how down that got me, you know, and, um, you know, and the third night, you know, because I was talk, talking to Adam, um, <laughs> Like he suddenly said to me, you know, um, do you, do you believe in Jesus? You know, as in what Jesus did. And I said yes. And he says no, you haven't. You know, or, you know, or you. <laughs> Or you would not be feeling the way that you know that you are, you know, because you haven't forgiven yourself, um, you know. Therefore, you haven't believed that Jesus died for you, and um, uh, and after that uh, night, um, you know, after speak speak speaking to Adam. Um, you know, as time goes on, you know, things have got better and better and better. You know, um, you know, I truly believe, I know and I believe as today, you know, since that tonight, you know, is that I'm free. You know, I really am. One more. One more, one more. Richard? One minute. Good afternoon, everybody. It's great to be here. Uh, before I start, I just want to say how much I enjoyed the worship um, this afternoon, it was absolutely awesome to sing some of those um, old songs. It really was. It really was a blessing. Um, I just want to give God all the glory for what he's done in my life this year. It's been a year that um, I'll be glad to see um, go, actually. Um, for a simple reason, I suffered two heart attacks earlier this year. And uh, I just thank God that he's, uh, that I'm still here. And 
He's an awesome God. And there, there was a scripture that he gave me um, last year, actually, and it was in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. And I just want to read it to you because, you know, if God gives you a verse, you want to hang on to it. You want to hang on to it. And you want to keep throwing it back to God and saying, God, I want you to honor this verse, what you've given me. And he gave me this verse last year. And it was, as I said, from chapter 3, verse 20. And he's, this is from the New Living Translation. He says, Now glory be to God, more than we could ever dare to ask or hope. Sometimes we ask things of God and... Um, They don't happen. God doesn't answer them. And I'd been praying and praying and praying over a certain thing. And then one day God said, it's finished. I'm not going to answer this request of yours. And I wondered why. But later on, I got the answer to that prayer. It was something, exactly what this verse says, that God will accomplish and give you far more than you could ever wish or desire, dream or imagine. You see, we limit God. We put him in a box. And we think because of our small puny brain that God has the same brain, but he doesn't. His brain is far beyond what we could ever imagine or think. And because he loves us so much, He knows what's best for us, and he gives you the best. He doesn't give you second best or third best. He gives you the best. And so I want to encourage every one of you here this morning, this afternoon, when you pray, pray with all your heart, soul, and mind, and believe that God will honor that prayer, no matter how long it takes. As my brother was saying here, 35 years, I mean, a day in the Lord is a thousand years, is a thousand years is a day. Time means nothing to God. And sometimes he puts us through a test to see how much we, we trust him, how much we believe and have faith in him. And if you can do that, then God will honor you. He will always honor you. He says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. And you've got to stand on God's word. So I want to encourage you for the next year. When you pray... Believe within your heart that God is listening no matter where you are or what you're doing. And he will hear you and he will answer your prayer in due time. It may not be the time that you want it to be answered, but he will honor that and answer it for you. God bless you. You're a lovely lovely people. Since I've been in this church, I've come to know a lot of you personally, and I love you heaps. I really do. And God brought me here for a purpose. And I'm so glad that I am here. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. God bless you all. Thank you, Richard. So, awesome testimonies. I often find that when people testify, it's usually after they've been through something. Because uh, even in my own personal experience, uh, I've experienced God in my most difficult times, and that's the time I feel I'm closest, and that's the time that His grace is sufficient. At our street, uh, our through our weakness, he is strong. Amen? So as we gather as we gather and reflect on the year that is ending and we look forward to the new year that's about to begin, I want us to take a view or take a look at where we are with God. Perhaps where, where have we been this year? Perhaps where we are at the present time uh, but more importantly, where God wants us, where he wants us to get to. So today's word uh, is a challenge for us. 
I prepared a word earlier in the week uh, along the lines of Thanksgiving uh, being the end of the year, but I, I changed it later in the week because I believe that God wants us to go to, wants us to keep going to new heights and new steps with him. He wants us to be blessed. He wants the best for us. Do you believe it, church? He doesn't want us to remain where we are. He doesn't want us to remain stagnant or still, but to move in the best that he has for us. So before I start, let's just pray for the word. Oh, Lord, Father, as we go through your word today, Father, just touch our hearts and touch our minds, Lord, what uh, you're trying to tell us through your words, not through the words of Brother Joe, but this is your word, Lord. I'm just the, uh, the person who is speaking. This is not my wisdom. This is your wisdom, the very word of God. This is your word, Father. Lord, I just pray for your anointing, Lord. I just pray that we may uh, walk in this word, put it upon our hearts, Lord. Listen to your word, Lord, and walk in it for the new year. In the name of Jesus, amen. So uh, I'll start off with a um, experience that we had this year, probably, like I said, um, we've had a, a, a blessed year, but we had one challenge early in the year. We had a lot of rain early in the year throughout the winter, and we experienced flooding in our house. Oh. So the neighbouring property, it's, it's, it's just all completely concrete uh, on the front, so with all the rain, all the storm water has to go somewhere and the storm water drains could not contain the amount of water that was coming down. So it, just, it was a big runoff from the neighbouring property. It went down our, uh, our driveway under the, the house. We live below our landlords. We live in, in a flat underneath our landlords and the landlord and his family live up top. So you go down a, a, a driveway, those who've been to our place know what I mean, and we live at the bottom. So all the, the water ran under the house, and it just, of course it's going to build up, and then eventually it, um, it starts coming through the wall. So Maggie rang me one night, I was at work, and she was panicking and screaming, there's water coming in the house, and I'm, what do I do? So she ended up spending about three hours. But, um, so once all the water was cleared away, of course, um, the carpet cleaners had to come in. Everything had to be removed. They had to put their dryers down and dehumidifiers. I don't know if anyone else has experienced this. But we, we thought, okay, the, we need to move house because uh, I think this is just a small property, so everything had to be moved out to, to allow room for the uh, dehumidifi dehumidifiers and the dryers to come in. So we found ourselves thinking about moving and started sorting out um, our belongings and possessions, what, what we need to hold on to and uh, what we perhaps we didn't need anymore. So <clears throat> we think about, and I think about the the year that we're leaving and the year that we're entering into, there's some, some things that we need to hold on to that are important to take into the new year, some things that perhaps we need to let go or we need to be rid of from our lives. And uh, also some things that uh, we need to remember so we go to my, um, if Hannah, you can think. So I titled it, so, An Old Challenge for a New Year. So our scripture today is 
from Colossians uh, chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. So if we can all read the Word of God together. Let's all read the Word of God together. So since then, everybody can please read this. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts and things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also will appear with him in glory. Thank you, Lord, for your word. So as we read through these verses together, we find that they challenge us to do exactly the same things as we look at our lives in the same way we are challenged to retain things, to release others, and to remember Um, as, so we open up this verse today. That see, we see God has a plan for each one of us. Of course, plans to prosper us, not to harm us, to give us a hope and a future. And God wants the best for us, he ex- but he expects certain things from us and that he has the right to demand these things in our lives. So some things that we need to must be retained. Uh, as I mentioned in my, in my story about the flood, the several items that were very important to us Uh, we, we did not want to throw these items away, that they are important to us. So in this verse, in a spiritual sense, uh, Paul is telling us that there's a couple of precious spiritual possessions that we would do well to hang on to. Number one, an awareness of our foundation. So in verse 1, since then you have been raised with Christ. So Apostle Paul is telling us that we have been risen with Christ. So it's a declaration of of a spiritual reality. Paul is saying, since you are risen with Christ, Paul is describing our spiritual position the position that we stand in. We have been risen with Christ. So when Jesus died at Calvary, every person that would place their faith in him also died that day. So in a, once again, in a spiritual sense, we died to the penalty and the power of sin when Jesus died on the cross. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord for that. Because I am dead, I do not have to worry about being punished for my sins. The price has been paid and I have already died. Because I have died with Christ, I have been set free from the power of sin over my life. So there is a sense in every child of God that they are dead. Touch your neighbor and say, you are dead. Touch your neighbor and say, you are dead. Dead to what? Dead to sin. You are dead to sin. 
But we have also been raised up with Jesus. When he died, we died. When he rose from the dead, we rose from the dead. As well. But when he got up, every person who would ever believe in him got up as well. We must never forget that we are dead to sin and alive to a new life in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Am I talking to anyone today? Hallelujah. <laughs> so this, the knowledge of this gives, gives us or should inspire us to live more and more for God's purpose. Uh, number two, attention to our, to our focus. So since we have been raised to a new life in Jesus, we are told to seek those things which are of above, to set our minds on the things above. So in other words, to be continually seeking those things which are of above. Uh, the second verse builds on that thought by telling us to set our affections on things that on things above and not the things on earth. So when I think about the thing coming to the Lord eight years ago, previous to that I had different affections. But after that and gradually as I lived out my Christian life I no longer felt the desire to do the things that I used to do, the places I used to go, the people I used to be with. All of a sudden, I, I have new affections. All of a sudden, I, I couldn't wait to get to church. I couldn't wait to, to go to life group. I couldn't wait to read the Word of God. And so this, this is uh, what it's saying, this... Um, to have an upward focus. So these affections are on our mind. <clears throat> focus our thoughts on heavenly things, not earthly things. Set our minds on the things of God that bring glory to Him. A quick, so we continue, we will look at a few verses following this verse that give an insight about what Paul is talking about here. But I remember listening to a sermon and the uh, particular preacher was saying, the unseen world or the spiritual world must be more real to us than the physical world. It must be more of a reality for us, the unseen rather than the seen heavenly things rather than earthly things must be so much more real to us. You know, even myself, and I know a lot of you, we, we only sense the, the spiritual, or perhaps when we come to church or in life group, or, and then it kind of fades away. But that's the kind of um, perspective that, that we need to have. So these are the these are the things that we we need to pursue. We need to pursue a, a deeper knowledge of Jesus. These are all the um, scriptures. To I would um, encourage you, perhaps uh, later on, to read the third chapter of Colossians. Um, just uh, that you can uh, go over what I've uh, shared today. A clean and holy life, uh, godly virtues, holiness in our domestic lives, perhaps in our, uh, in our families, in our marriages. Of course, everything we do uh, is in accordance to the word of God. Everything's there how to be a godly husband, how to be a godly wife, uh, how to honour your mother and father. So these are the things, uh, this is our map or 
instructions that we live our lives by, uh, godly virtues, holiness in our social life, so perhaps uh, how we do life in church, how we do life in our workplace, in our friendships, uh, how, how we to act accordingly as a Christian. Uh, of course, we cannot do without an effective prayer life. We need prayer and a fruitful witness so that we can be show a hurting and fallen world the love of Christ through our lives. So in other words, we are to live like Jesus lived. And we live out the fruit of the Spirit in our lives every day. The fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness and self-control. Also in chapter 3, I didn't include it in my notes, but I'll read it. Chapter 3, verses 12 to 13, if you have your Bibles. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. So we challenge to live out our lives with these genuine uh, spiritual values and not the values of this fallen world. Uh, I remember the message of Justin two weeks ago. He preached on Romans about not being conformed to the world. Do not be conformed to this world, the culture of the world, the values of this world. The same thing here. It's the spiritual values. So we give a attention to these spiritual and heavenly things to live out a holy, God-honoring life in this world. So we allow a heavenly perspective to govern an earthly walk. So as we negotiate our way through this world, our thoughts are of above, how we act accordingly in our lives, through every situation, we think uh, thoughts are of above. It's not always easy. So every decision, every activity, every plan, every purpose considered in the light of eternity. So when we, when we come to God, we, we often think that eternal life will start when we leave this earth, but actually yeah, our eternity starts from the moment that we accept Jesus as Lord and Saviour. Our eternity starts here on earth. So we lay out everything uh, before the Lord, not from our earthly, fleshly perspective, but from a viewpoint, a heavenly viewpoint. So we're called to be heavenly minded. So this is the challenge. This is the challenge for us uh, to really press forward into the Word of God. The more we dwell in the word of God, the more we, we think according to the word. So the reason perhaps why we struggle uh, to take these values or to walk in these values perhaps that we are starving ourselves of, of the wisdom and the knowledge of the word. So we're called upon to be heavenly minded. This is possible because our Lord's presence in heaven 
His place is at the right hand of the Father and he makes intercession for us and gives us all that we need to live for him. Tell your neighbour, he gives us everything we need. Gives us everything that we need to live for him. So as we prepare to enter into a new year, may the Lord realise who we are and what we have in Jesus. May that realisation change our walk for his glory. There's some things that just have no place in our lives. If we are to walk victorious in God, there's some things that we need to rid off, some things we need, need to let go of. As in our story uh, of our, at our flat, our flood, it gave us an opportunity to give away a lot of things to the Salvation Army, to the local Christian shop. I gave away... Uh, furniture, just rang up the Salvation Army, come and get this lounge suite. The same is true in our spiritual walk, some things that we need to let go of. They try to attach, attach um, themselves to our lives, they don't do us any good. They, those things need to be removed. They need to go. Paul tells us in verse 2 that we're to focus our thoughts on heavenly things and not on earthly things. Why we do, we avoid getting caught up in things of this world that fill our minds and hinder our walk rather than giving our attention to the things of God. So in this chapter, Paul, Apostle Paul he mentions some of these distractions that will hinder our walk with God if we allow them to. Some of the things that we need to avoid. And number one, are we, uh, false doctrine or false teachings or false gospel. So in this chapter, Paul was, was warning the early believers at that time not to be carried away with false teachings or false gospel. Uh, so this is what the enemy tries to do. He doesn't mind us coming to church as long as we're not reading our Bibles. He doesn't mind us going to life group as long as we're following a false gospel. So this is, this is what he tries to do. He, he deceives. So if we get trapped up in some kind of false system or belief that takes our emphasis of Jesus. It's always about Jesus. So he does this uh, in, in certain ways through, uh, number one, we have philosophies. So the wisdom of men... So if a person, what a person teaches is not backed up by the word of God, that system is to be avoided by the believer. Vain deceit refers to those who deceive through trickery or through a slick message or false teaching. If the message is not about Jesus, it's not of God. If the focus is not on Jesus and his shed blood, it's not on God. Traditions of men, we are to be warned to be careful of long-held beliefs. Just because people have believed something to be true and have been taught that something is true does not make it true. We are to base our faith and our walk on the traditions of 
we are not to base our faith and our walk on the traditions of men, no matter how godly or worthy of respect the man may be. We are to base our belief system on the word of God and the word of God alone. And finally, the rudiments of the world. Believers are are warned against falling away from a mature faith to accept a simple message. So as Christians, we're called to become mature, to grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, to learn his word, to put his word on our hearts and our minds so that we don't get carried away. Once again, Pastor Jet preached on building your foundation on the rock. The rock is Jesus Christ and his word. That's amazing how the word of God over the last three weeks it all follows on. It speaks for itself. But that's why it's a challenge for us to go into the new year and to really press into God, to press closer to the Lord, really Otherwise, we don't want to be carried away. We don't want to be deceived. Uh, But we must know and try every teaching against the clear word of God. Amen? Amen. As I continue, two foolish demands we're to watch out for people up the top there. We're to watch up to people who try to place us back under the law. Or Jesus said, I have come not to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. So he came to deliver us from legalism. So it's impossible to fulfill the law. If you're guilty of one, you're guilty of all. The commandments is just a a way to point us, uh, summed up in two things about the love, loving God and the love of others. It's just the greatest commandment. So we stand in our freedom that we have been given in, in, in Jesus Christ. He's telling these believers that no man has the right to be judged. If we have been saved by Jesus, we have been delivered by the demands of the law and we enjoy our freedom in Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say, you've been set free. You've been set free. Uh, The whole point of these verses is that true spirituality does not consist in the keeping of man-made external rules, but in a personal faith relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So what you do or do not do is not what makes you spiritual. Spirituality comes from knowing Jesus and allowing him to, to live through you. Amen? The next is fleshly deeds. Again, we all read this together. Uh, Colossians 3, verse 5 to 10, that we put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life that you once lived. But now you must also rid yourself of all such things as these. Anger, rage, malice, slander and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self which has been renewed 
the knowledge and the image of its creator. Amen. So in these verses, Paul was listing some of the common sin, sins of the flesh and admonished believers to eliminate them from their lives. So we look at some of these things in our life that we need to put away that will hinder our walk with God, that will cripple our spiritual life. How can we be victorious over the sin in our lives? So one step is that we can take is to starve the fleshly appetites, which reminds me uh, of a Christian devotion that I once saw. It had a picture of a, two wolves, one white, one black. Has anyone seen that? Uh, the white wolf representing good, the black wolf representing evil. And which one would be victorious? Which one would, over, uh, would win? That would dominate? It's the one that you feed. The one that you feed the most will be the strongest. You understand what I'm saying? The, the one that you feed will be the strongest. If you feed your spiritual life, you can have victory. If you feed, feed your flesh, the flesh will dominate your life. <clears throat> so we starve our fleshly appetites. We do not feed our anger. We don't feed our. We don't slander. We don't talk against anybody. We. Uh, I used to use some pretty colourful language in my younger days, which um, you won't find me saying much uh, swear words. Uh, thing when when I read the Word of God and it says, uh, "Fresh water cannot come out of a, a, a dirty well." Is that right? Fresh water cannot come out of a... <laughs> but I'm a, I'm a, I should be a spring of blessing. The same, the same mouth that blesses is the same uh, mouth that curses my wife, the same mouth that, that blesses others. So um, that's uh, my, the point I'm trying to make. So the second, second of all, we can crowd these things out. How do we do that? By focusing, by giving all our time and attention to the things of God. And the Word of God, it, that sin cannot gain a foothold in our hearts. The last point is some things that we we need to remember. So in our story, as we uh, stored some of our belongings into uh, plastic bins, storage bins, uh, I came across some some remembrances. Uh, I came across my old journal when I started my Christian life, uh, photos and things. And I remember, I'm so blessed, and the bless, how God blessed me. And I never want to forget those things. I used to keep a journal of my Christian walk from the time I began. And it's a good idea to do that. And you can see how God uh, works throughout your life and the people that he brings into your life and the blessings. So some things we, we need to remember. We need to remember, take the opportunity and remember how God has blessed us. So these last two verses of our text serve as a reminder of some important spiritual truths that we need to consider before we leave these things behind. So read with me. So we, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, that you will also appear with him in glory. So number one, there's been a death. 
So we are reminded again that we have died to sin and the influence of this world. So one of the ways to, for us to enjoy spiritual victory in, in our lives is for us to understand that we have been crucified with Christ. Tell your neighbor you have been crucified with Christ. Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I that live, but Christ that live in me. It's no longer Levi that lives, but Christ that lives in her. It's no longer Auntie Denny that lives, but Christ that lives in her. It's no longer you that live, but Christ that lives in you and through you. So we need to get a we get a grip on that truth and do what it tells us to do and grow deeper into the things of the Lord. Uh, two, there's been a deposit. When we were saved, we were given a new life in Jesus. This new life imparts to us the divine nature that guarantees us eternal security. Because we are hidden in Jesus, we are under his protection. And no matter what challenges we face or spiritual uh, battles that come against us, nothing, nothing can take us away from Jesus and nothing can snatch us out of the righteous right hand of our God. And three, we've, there has been a dream. And Paul closes this paragraph by reminding us that this world is not the best that there is. That we deny our flesh down here that we may be victorious. That we battle Satan that we may enjoy victory. That Jesus comes, our faith in him, when Jesus comes, when Jesus returns, our faith in him will be vindicated and we will be glorified with him. Can I get an amen for that? Am I talking to somebody? Okay, so yeah. This is powerful stuff. I'm preaching to myself. So each one of us here in this room, we have three battles, of course. We have a battle against the world and the worldly system and the worldly cultures. We battle against our flesh, our fleshly, our flesh nature, and we, we won't give them all the credit, but we also have an uh, enemy, uh, the devil himself, who comes against us. So each of these enemies uh, comes to hinder us and to cause us to fall. But one day, the battles will be over. This flesh will be changed and remain in his image. So one day we, we will leave this world with its sin and its evil and the problems and it's devil and we will go to be with the Lord, our Redeemer, forever. Can I ask Jeremy to come up? Jeremy? So right now, I have a dream, not Martin Luther King, I have a dream, a dream of a day when I will go home. Dream of a day I will see my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. One day that dream will become a reality and I will be in his presence. 
So that is what we need to remember as we fight the good fight of faith. Let's seek to make 2018 the best years of our lives for the glory of God. Can we do that? Can we press into God 2018? Some things in our lives that we need to hold on to. There's some things in our lives that we need to let go of. Some things in our lives that we need to remember. As we, as we stand here on the cusp of a new year, we take a good, hard look at our lives and our walk with the Lord. Once again, are there some things in our lives? Do we need to refocus? Is there some things that we need to adjust? Once again, things that we need to release, that we need, need to lay down as the year draws to an end. Some things that we need to remember. As we had earlier, our awesome testimonies to give thanks for God for his blessings in our lives. Do we need to come back into harmony with his will for our lives? His good and pleasing will. As we sang earlier about his faithfulness, the Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 22 and 23. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. So I just I just sense that just an overwhelming overflow of God's grace here today over each one of you. That no matter where we've come from or where we're going or what we've been through, that God is with us. He never promises that we're immune from heartache, from pain, from suffering, from challenges but he promises us that he is faithful, that he is with us, that he goes through the storms with us, he goes through the hurts with us, he goes through the broken relationships with us, he goes through the loss of job with us, he goes with the loss of loved ones with us.